Gentlemen, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us. Steve, let's start with you. This meeting, ICANN 49, started on the heels of the historic NTIA announcement about the transfer of stewardship of the IANA functions. What has come at you in the course of the meeting on that issue? Uh, it was a historic announcement for sure, and it has uh, attracted an enormous amount of attention. Uh, one of the things that NTIA was very careful to do was to say they wanted community input. Uh, as a consequence, uh, some of the people seemed to be uh, uneasy because they wanted more structure. We know, of course, that if they had said, this is the way we're going to do it, a different set of people would say, hey, why are you telling us how to do it? So there's been a, uh, a spectrum, a, a wide range of responses, mostly positive, uh, but ranging over from, uh, we don't quite understand what the way forward is, to a number of very specific suggestions about how to proceed forward. This is the healthy part of the process, and uh, over the next period of time, we're going to see uh, a lot of suggestions, and they, they'll coalesce and we'll sort them out and uh, try to come up with a useful set of ways forward. Fadi, this is going to involve other members of the internet community, what we call the I-STARS. How do you include them in this process? Uh, it's uh, important to underline that the process must include not just the other technical communities, but even broader than that, any community that wants to have a say in this process. This is an open, all-inclusive, global process to find these methods. How will we involve them is by running uh, consultations and public forums, not only in ICANN meetings over the next 18 months, but hopefully also uh, the plan is to do these in the meetings of our other organizations in the technical space, the IETF, the regional internet registries, uh, the CCTLD regional organizations, uh, we will hold a public consultation in Net Mundial in uh, the upcoming meeting in Brazil, at the IGF, uh, at our CCTLD forums around the world. So the idea is to reach as many people as possible in uh, public consultations to be also complemented by online consultations where we will have space on the web for people to provide input so that from the beginning and throughout this process is open, transparent, and will yield the outcomes uh, that the UN United States government clearly outlined in their uh, decision to transition the oversight. What has the community reaction been this week? Well, clearly the community has been waiting for this for 15 years. Uh, clearly this is not uh, a surprise because we have been asking for this all along. And in fact, the U.S. government has modulated its stewardship over time. It has modulated it down, dialed it down, and this was just a natural moment for all of this to happen, due, as the U.S. government said, to the maturity of the ICANN structures, the ICANN mechanisms, and the whole community's readiness to actually embrace these responsibilities and establish the appropriate uh, accountability mechanisms to replace the U.S. role. Steve, do we have now with with ICANN 49? Was it the start? Was it the building of a foundation for this process, which will define transfer of the stewardship function? Quite a bit. Um, the the timing is very nice because with ICANN 49 here in Singapore, uh, people from all over the world, from all segments of the internet community are here interacting not just with ICANN but interacting with each other uh, and so um, ICANN is everybody here but not just with the board not just with the staff um, and and so quite a lot of uh, cooperative dialogue of yeah. sorting of ideas is uh, going on it's a little hard perhaps to see the shape of that uh, but I can tell you that it, this is the the, the the early stage of the cooking process and uh, a very nice tasty stew is coming out. Fani, looking ahead, we're wrapping up ICANN 49, you're going into Brazil. Give us a sort of preview of that meeting, if you will. Brazil is a multi-stakeholder meeting organized by all the stakeholders, private sector, 
governments and civil society together to discuss the principles for internet governance that we can all come around and agree to as we move into this next phase. In addition, this meeting will clearly focus on a roadmap to go forward, an operationalizable roadmap, not just a roadmap of ideas and uh, promises, but a, a roadmap that points the world towards a framework and an ecosystem of concrete activities that will allow us to address technical and non-technical issues and do it in a way that respects the global sphere as well as the national spheres of governance. How we do that uh, is going to be through two days of meetings and consultations that will include various groups trying to uh, address various issues and then bringing us together at the end of these two days, hopefully, uh, to some consensus that allows us to start operationalizing a roadmap in the days and weeks and months after Net Mundial. The attendance to Net Mundial is very promising. We have oversubscribed number of people who have indicated their interest to be there. They have received nearly 200 submissions on uh, ideas and proposals for global internet governance. But I must say this, we need to make sure that we do not miss the opportunity at Net Mundial of uh, building a framework that goes beyond the remit of ICANN and IANA. Whilst we should address uh, the ICANN and IANA uh, transition, especially after the US government announcement, and I suggest we make room for that in Net Mundial, we cannot have the entire conference be focused on this one issue when we frankly have a larger agenda to address. And I think all of us are committed uh, to go to Net Mundial and make it that important first step in the new age of internet governance that builds on the past but also addresses the challenges of the future. Let me ask you specifically about the APAC region. It was about a year ago when you actually apologized to the region. Uh, for a lack of more inclusion in the multi-stakeholder process. What's your feeling now, today? We have come a long way. A year ago, when I uh, came to Asia for the first time, our presence in Asia was very limited. We had three people here in all of the Asia-Pacific region, uh, and we had, frankly, very, very limited activities, if at all. Uh, in a region that boasts about half the Internet users of the world, this was unacceptable. And I did indeed apologize to the community. But more importantly, I promised action. And today I'm happy to report that we have 14 people in the Asia PAC region. That's a huge increase in our presence. We have launched multiple programs and engagement centers across the region. We have a partnership with India to launch a center of excellence on uh, DNS security. We have in Korea a partnership with KISA to uh, take our content and make it available to people in the Korean language and with uh, facilitation for them to appreciate and understand the content. We have now uh, lines of support for the community where they can call and get support uh, in uh, local languages including Chinese and on and on and on. So the engagement picture for ICANN in this region is transformed. And uh, this week, uh, not only did I come to attend this meeting, but I have personally, with my family, moved here for the next few months so that I can also, with my own uh, schedule and my own personal commitment, show to Asia that I am committed to our new hub in the Asian region, which is Singapore, Asia-Pacific region. Steve, summarize ICANN 49 for me. What's the big takeaway from this meeting? Well. Uh, first of all, it's very important to understand that uh, these are big complex meetings and there's no single topic. Uh, this is a forum for many things to take place. Uh, that said, uh, clearly the announcement that we were talking about and the more general issues of uh, the uh, expansion of the footprint for ICANN to uh, uh, be much more global uh, that Fadi talked about, the development of the hubs here and in, in Istanbul as well. 
uh, plus the uh, the even broader topic of internet governance, uh, which will be focused on the uh, Brazil meeting next month. Uh, those all have been very big things. Then in addition, there's the usual work that we do. The GTLD program is rolling along. Uh, we are, we're bringing out new, uh, uh, new names on a regular basis, uh, and uh, that's having an impact, and it's helping shape the future. Um, and uh, a lot of focus on security issues, DNSSEC, and uh, a number of other, a number of other topics. So it's a broad-based uh, agenda. Fadi, your overall impression of this meeting? Very positive, very, very energetic, very substantive, and frankly, we will remember this meeting just like ICANN 1 was in Singapore. ICANN 49 will be remembered as a meeting that uh, in many ways ended uh, the early phase of ICANN and entered ICANN into a new phase. Uh, a new phase of maturity, of responsibility. Uh, it's exemplified by the decision the United States government did to hand us a very ominous responsibility to facilitate and convene the world towards uh, how ICANN will be uh, providing the world assurances of accountability across the board, but also accountability uh, on the IANA functions. These are important times and I hope that by the time we hit ICANN 50, which will be in London, we would have clearly shown everyone uh, what we're made of. We're made of a community of dedicated volunteers, uh, of a set of procedures and mechanisms that are proven, that we will use and leverage in order to embrace the big responsibilities we have ahead, and we're made of a diverse group of people that bring the views of the world in an inclusive way to address this important responsibility that has been placed on us. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.